Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football tonight from the Marketplace Grill, a favorite place for football fans to eat on the weekends before or after games as you're traveling around. And coming up here in just a few minutes, we'll tell you about some of the great food at Marketplace Grill. But we've got high school football galore, the third round of the high school playoffs, including the semifinals from 5A and 4A coming up here in just a few minutes. But we're going to begin tonight in Class 2A, the number one team in the state, Rising Wildcats. Get your camo on, let's head south. The Class 2A highlights are brought to you by My Bank First Security. This one's not been written about their talent. Hold up, okay? Hey, they, they may be faster than us, Hey, they, they might be bigger than us. They, they might play in some super conference that, that's just a notch above the rest of us. I, I don't know. Hey, they might be the biggest, baddest son of us ever drug a breath. Hey, they might be. But don't you doubt for one second who's going to win this football game. Yes, sir. Don't you doubt for one second. We're going to win this football game. Yes, sir. We're going to win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't doubt it for a second. Yes, sir. Don't doubt it for a second. You come out wide on that. You hear me? Yes, sir. Wide on that. Wide open. Wide open. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Coach Clay Toddy and all of Ryzen dressed and ready for super talented Palestine Wheatley and the Patriots would strike first. Quarterback Fred Leak going 11 yards with the keeper. Palestine was up 6 to nothing. The Patriots driving again now, but this time Leak's pass is going to be picked off by Ryzen's Aaron Terry. He does it all on both sides of the football for Ryzen. He's going to take this pick back and break every tackle. 95 yards for the touchdown. Ryzen was up 7 to 6. But Palestine coming right back. The Patriots looking tough early. Rashawn Barnes breaking tackle. He's hard to bring down. That would set up Antonio Leak short touchdown run, and that put Palestine Wheatley back up 12 to seven on Ryzen. But the Wildcats just won't stay down. It's Terry this time on the quarterback keeper. He shows some of his toughness right here again. 30 yard pickup, another Ryzen first down. And a few plays later on third and goal from the one. It's Marquise Rawls with the score over the right side. That put Ryzen up 15 to 12. Now Palestine was up by three at halftime, but Ryzen would unleash 28 unanswered points in the third quarter. And the Wildcats are headed for a rematch with Junction City in the semifinal. Final score, number one Ryzen, 15. Number three, Palestine Wheatley, 30. From Ryzen to Jesseville now. Jesseville's trying to slow down high octane Harding Academy. This one would be a shootout. Jesseville's got a pretty good weapon too. And the alt breaking tackles running over Harding Academy. Then alt goes around the end. He sheds three tackles and will take a fourth one into the end zone. That puts Jesseville up seven to nothing. Alt was just one of five players for Jesseville that rushed for over 100 yards on the night. Harding Academy had plenty of offense. Craig Kell did it on the ground for the Wildcats. And quarterback Zach Tribble passed for 623 yards. But it wasn't enough. Jesseville is headed to the semifinals for the first time in school history. Final score, Jesseville 58, Harding Academy 51. We wrap up our Class 2A quarterfinal coverage at Charleston. The Tigers playing host to the huge Blue Devils. And Charleston wasn't falling for the single wing razzle dazzle. Charleston's Alex Palea with the stick behind the line of scrimmage. Charleston led 14 to nothing late in the first half and we're looking for more. Matt Stewart goes up top with a nice toss and the catch by Clay Crowley. And on the next play, Stewart finds senior Drew Hill. A three year starter, this guy is so smooth. 54 yards for the Charleston touchdown. Hill had three touchdowns of the night, and Charleston is headed for the semifinals for the second consecutive year. Final score, Charleston Tigers 28, Hughes Blue Devils 0. And here's a look at Hooten Target Health Football Class 2A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Ryzen survived Palestine Wheatley and is headed back to Junction City. Ryzen lost down at Junction 33 to 21 in last year's semifinals. So the Wildcats will be looking for some payback on Friday night. Number two is Charleston. The Tigers got to the semis with its defense. They'll travel to Jesseville for a rematch of a second round game from last year. Charleston won that one 21 to eight and the Tigers will be favored again at Jesseville on Friday. 
Palestine Wheatley had just one goal this year, and that was to play for the state championship, and they may have done just that Friday night at Ryzen. Junction City is the defending state champion and back in the final four. Jesseville is the 5AA champion. The Lions outscored Harding Academy 58-51. This Jesseville team just keeps reaching milestones for Coach Don Phillips. Harding Academy starts the second five. It was a nice turnaround year for the Wildcats, but they didn't have nearly enough defense to get them to Little Rock. The Wildcats are followed by the Golden Arrows and the Outlaws. Hughes' season is over. The Blue Devils went three weeks into the playoffs with less talent than they've had the last three years. Perryville rounds out the top ten. An excellent job by Coach Doug Corley and his Mustangs. They were already turning their program around before dropping down to double-A this fall. Now, the United States Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. Harding Academy tackle Logan Wynn loves the game day atmosphere. I was just coming out here with all the people in the stands and uh, just hearing them yell for you. The line force is a dominator in the classroom, posting near a 3.8 GPA. Playing one of the most difficult positions, it's one that receives very little glitz or glamour. You don't get a lot of credit for it because you don't make all the plays. Uh, but he's really a team player and he just wants to do whatever has to be done to help us be successful. Congratulations to Logan Wynn, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. And congratulations to Logan Wynn from Harding Academy, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football tonight. From the Marketplace Drill, we have Class 3A highlights, the quarterfinal matchups coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Big Red Fina. I've seen it again. I saw a big sign they got out there, Smash Mouth. I'm starting to really like that word, Smash Mouth. Everybody, for some reason, thinks we're not Smash Mouth. That's fine. Let's prove it tonight. Let's be physical out there on offense and defense. Great opportunity. Number one team in the state. Nobody gives you a chance. Nobody gives you a chance. Only people that believe are in this room right here, and those people in our stands, those are the only people that believe in you. First year coach Josh Floyd and his shallow Christian Saints traveling to Boonville for a quarterfinal clash, but the Bearcats were looking for some payback for last year's first round loss to the Saints, and they got it early. Senior Anthony Tillery with the sack on Shallow's first possession. The Boonville D kept the pressure on the Shallow spread all night, and on fourth down, Boonville's toddler Turner fills the short punt. He's gonna find the seam and he's gone. 47 yards for the Boonville touchdown. The Bearcats led seven to nothing before their offense ever hit the field. Shallow trying to get it going on its next possession. Sophomore David Ingram finding some running room for the Saints. And a little bit later, sophomore quarterback Matt Simpson finds Stephen Kind in the flat, but there's Tillery again with the smackdown. So Boonville gets the ball back and goes to work. Curtis Christian's got blockers out in front and he's loose all the way down to Shallow. 16 yard line. Christian rushed for 130 yards on the night. Boonville set to score again. And on the next play, a little misdirection from the Boonville Veer. Senior Jeremy McDonald gets to the corner for the touchdown. That put Boonville up 14 to nothing. The Bearcats led by as many as 29 points in the first half and would pour it on in the second. Final score Boonville 7, Shalu Christian 29. From Boonville to the Bruins now, it's the defending state champion Kalaski Academy in the quarterfinals for the third time in four years, playing host to Dollarway, and that's Cody Burns for Dollarway, picking up 25 tough yards. Moments later, Burns punches it in for the short touchdown, and Dollarway was up six to nothing. But the Bruins bounce back. Kulaski Academy sophomore quarterback Stefan Lux to Trevor Gillette for the first down. Then Lux hits Aaron Lankford for the TD. And it's tied at six. But Dollarway's been tough on both sides of the ball all year. That's Desmoni Germani with the interception. And he takes it to the house for Dollarway and gave the Cardinals a 14 to six advantage. Burns would really help Dollarway on offense. 133 yards rushing for him, four touchdowns. And the Cardinals pulled away in the fourth quarter. Final score, Dollarway 43, Pulaski Academy 16. Gonna be like this. Gonna be a war. In Warren now, the Lumberjacks in the quarterfinals for the third time in four years. But Central Arkansas Christian has the playoff savvy. Jesse Gates goes up top to Michael Shattuck, 46 yards for the CAC touchdown. That put the Mustangs up 14 to seven. Warren would respond though. Aaron Rao, a three-year starter, to AJ Avery, 28 yards for the touchdown. That tied it up at 14. CAC would stick to its air attack. Gates to Trent Morgan for a first down, 
Gates would account for 410 yards of total offense, including 252 through the air. Another long pass to Morgan would set up a CAC field goal, and the Mustangs were up by 19 in the second half. But Warren wouldn't quit. Rao hits Deontay Jackson out of the backfield. He's just a junior. He breaks tackles and goes 14 yards for the score, but it was too little, too late for Warren. CAC is headed for its first appearance in the semifinals. Final score, CAC 52, Warren 33. Feels really good, and it's a little uncharted water for us, but fortunately, you know, we're playing real well right now, uh, and I think we're just now reaching our peak, which is great timing, but uh, I know Nashville, uh, what Coach Wood has done there is pretty phenomenal in just one year, but again, we're going to a place that has another, a lot of tradition again, and uh, uh, so we're going to be the Road Warriors uh, you know, one more week. And here are Hooton's Arkansas Football Updated Class 3A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Boonville is 13-0. The Bearcats have won every game by at least two touchdowns this year. They scored five touchdowns in the final 15 minutes against Shallow on Friday night. Central Arkansas Christian is in the semifinals for the first time in school history. The Mustangs are headed for the hill at Nashville. The Scrappers are undefeated as well, and that'll be a big semifinal matchup. The Hooton's Arkansas Football TV cameras will be there when the Mustangs Mustangs and the Scrappers get it on. As predicted, Dollarway beat Kulaski Academy on Friday night. The Cardinals are in the semifinals. Warren starts the second five. The Lumberjacks have won 46 games over the past four years. Green Forest is number seven. The Tigers won a school record of 12 games this year, and they're still talking about a controversial goal line play in Green Forest today. The Tigers thought they got in the end zone, but instead lose by seven points at Nashville. Ashdown lost just two games this year. Those two losses were to Boonville and Nashville. Shiloh Christian had a phenomenal year under first-year coach Josh Floyd. The Saints lost four games, and the combined record of the four teams they lost to was 46-5. Both Atkins and Ashdown won 10 games this season, and both graduate tremendous senior classes. Now, the Phillips Spirit Student of the Week. Warren High School junior Lindsey Adams enjoys the enthusiasm and relationships built by being a Lumberjack cheerleader. I like um, game day and I really like the girls on the squad. They're all my best friends and, and we really have a good time cheering. But I really enjoy Friday nights and being out here in front of the crowd and getting the boys boosted up. Lindsay maintains a 4.0 grade point average. She sings in the school choir and ensemble and she's an active member of the First Baptist Church in Warren. So I was saved um, when I was in the first grade and uh, I, I really think that's important. More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. And we begin our Class 4A semifinal action at Greenwood. The Bulldogs play in host to the red-hot Pulaski Robinson Senators. The Senators undefeated, making their third straight trip to the semifinals, but Greenwood put Robinson's fire out early. The Bulldogs built a 30-8 halftime lead. Mostly with this guy, junior playmaker Daniel Stegall. He passed for 221 yards on the night. He connects with senior Lucas Miller. Greenwood was looking to add to its 22-point lead in the third quarter. Just four plays later, Stegall buys some time. He's going to find Miller for the touchdown. That was Stegall's fourth TD of the night. Greenwood was up 37-8. to Robinson trying to get something going in the fourth quarter now, but the snap gets away deep in Senator territory. Turnovers and mistakes plagued Robinson all night. Austin Eford comes away with the recovery. That would set up a three-play scoring drive capped by this short Eric Melton blast and Greenwood drums the Senators. Oh yeah. Hey Greenwood, your Bulldogs are headed back to the Rock for the first time since 2000. Final score, Greenwood 44, Pulaski Robinson 8. I'm proud of you. I don't know, there's no other words to say. You played an awesome football game. My question for you, do you have one left in you? The yeah! win's gonna be tough. The win's got some great athletes, uh, probably the best that we'll ever see, you know. Uh, just gotta go out there and do what we did tonight, execute, and have our defense, have our special teams play great games, and just gotta go play our hearts out. On a windy night in the Delta, the Wind Yellow Jackets playing host to the Alma Airedales and Coach Frank Vines. Alma had a chance to go up three to nothing early, but Ryan Evans, Phil Go, fills the win. It's off, but Wynn is penalized for roughing the kicker. That gives Alma another chance, and on the very next play after the missed field goal, seven yards right up the middle, it's Jeremy Gregory. The final play of the first quarter, it was seven to nothing, Airedales. 
Wynn would respond in the second quarter, converting on two fourth down plays. This one, a fake punt. Courtney Williams gets loose and get ready for the big hit. Ow! Williams gives the Yellow Jackets new life, but again, they would face fourth and two, this time from the four yard line. Wynn goes for it again. The big pile up, and somewhere on the bottom of that pile is number 30 at sophomore Terrence Garrett. He ties it up seven to seven with eight minutes left in the first half. It would stay that way until midway through the third quarter. That's when Alma quarterback Joseph Medeiros looks to his left, but he's intercepted at senior Darius Jeffrey for Wynn. He's going to return it and fake and score for the Yellow Jackets that put them up 14 to seven. Alma would come back though in the fourth quarter making big plays on third and 13. Adam Hobbs with the sensational catch from Joseph Medeiros. And a little bit later now, the same drive in the fourth quarter, Medeiros, his pass is tipped, but caught great concentration by Alex Cortez. That set up Alma inside the five yard line, but the Yellow Jackets defense would bow up. On three straight running plays, the Airedales got nothing. Then on fourth and goal, here's your ball game. The Airedales with the pitch, but no, it's Williams there with the stop, and the Yellow Jackets are headed to the rock. Final score, win 14, Alma. You can show what they was made out of. Uh, you know, there's no quit in them. Uh, they, uh, we fought. The fact that they were so physical up front, we couldn't run inside effectively. And here is Hooters Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. The Yellow Jackets will play in the state title game for the second time in four years against Greenwood. The Bulldogs will be going for their second state title in five years. That game is set for Saturday night at 6.30 at War Memorial Stadium. Alma won 12 games this year and beat Greenwood by three points just three weeks ago. Pulaski Robinson has been to the semifinals three straight years, but have yet to kick in the door and make it to the state title game. Robinson's last Last appearance in the finals was 1980. Batesville won it all last year and finishes in the top five this season. The Pioneers are followed by Oak Grove, Siloam Springs, and Bologna. The Eagles' four losses were to teams with a combined 42 and 8 record this year. Coming up next, more of Hooters Arkansas football. Highlights from the big Class 5A semifinal at Quigley Stadium are next on Hooters Arkansas football. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. And we begin our Class 5A coverage at Quigley Stadium, Little Rock Central, and Springdale, the top two teams in the state, playing in front of a packed house. And early in the first quarter, the Tigers on the tip drill. It's Kevin Thornton with the interception. He's going to return it to the 12-yard line. Just three plays later, Sonic Super Team quarterback Clark Irwin sticks it in, and Central is up. Seven to nothing. Now, a little bit later in the first quarter, Central looking to score again. Irwin scrambling, and he makes his only completion of the game to get through. It's Thornton for a 24-yard touchdown. Tigers 14, Springdale zero. But the Bulldogs would put together a drive, but it ends. Arkansas Razorback recruit Mitch Mustang intercepted by Stuart Franks on the goal line, and he would return this thing 85 yards. <laughs> That would set up another central score as little Thomas Page is going to squirt in for a three yard run and put Central up 20 to nothing just 13 minutes into the game. Now some say Central's defense is not as good as a year ago, but on this Friday night they were just smothering Springdale. And on this play, Mustang, the Razorback recruit, breaks his right forearm. Springdale would play the final three quarters without their starting quarterback, but backup Dylan Adams did a nice job. He would score on this sneak in the second quarter. That cut Central's lead to 13, but the Bulldogs didn't get much. Central's defense held Springdale to well below their average, just 188 yards of offense for Springdale on the night, and Little Rock Central gets a chance to defend its state title Saturday at 12 noon against West Memphis. Final score, Tigers 30. Springdale, 21. Yeah, we tried to keep try to keep our heads straight. We knew we could do it if we uh, all stuck together and played a hard, strong game. Uh, Springdale's a great team and uh, our hardest competition of the year. We stuck together and fought through.
And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Updated Class 5A Rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Springdale and Little Rock Central have shared the top two spots all year. Central was number one until losing to Bryant. The Tigers back on top this week, and they will be favored against West Memphis in the 5A Finals on Saturday. West Memphis, a one-point winner in overtime in the semifinals for the second consecutive year. The Blue Devils beat Northside 35-34 on Friday night. Coach Lanny Dowks and West Memphis lost to Central by five touchdowns in the season opener. They get a chance at revenge Saturday at noon. Springdale, which beat Northside by 18 earlier this year, drops to number three, and there's the Grizzlies at four, followed by the two teams from Saline County, Bryant at number five and Benton at number six. Fayetteville's number eight and Russell's nine. Remember, the Cyclones won at Fort Smith Northside just four weeks ago. And for this week's State Farm Play of the Week, we take you back to win. The Alma Airedales trailing the Yellow Jackets by seven points, but looking to tie it up late in the fourth quarter when receiver Alex Cortez shows great concentration, makes the juggling catch that gave Alma a chance to win. And that is our State Farm Play of the Week.